harmonize with me and hold me tight all through the night. You're shining bright, I'm your oyster, baby, you're my pearl. We're back! Hey, hey! Oh, guys, well, it's lovely to be here with you. And with you too, Bill. Oh, it's lovely to see you, Dominic. How's everything going? It's going very well, if, I, if I'm honest. It's, it's been a nice week. Yeah? Yeah. Good. You? Um, it's been going pretty good. good. I've been kind of enmeshed in all of these comments and reviews and things that people have been saying about the podcast. And wasn't it nice to see Elijah Wood last week? That was lovely to see Elijah Wood. But there was so much Elijah that we had to make it two weeks worth of Elijah Woods. Yeah, we're going to give you guys two weeks of Elijah. Or what we were going to do was maybe give you like a shortened, edited version that would only do one week. And we don't think that we should do that. Because we've got some more Elijah at the end of this show. So we better get straight to the voicemails, Dom. All right, let's have a look. Oh, emails and real mails. Fast as tigers, slow as snails. Hi guys, um, my name's Diana Morgan. I'm from Ontario, Canada. I just want to say I love you both so much and I love that you're doing this. Tuesdays have turned into my favourite day of the week now. Um, I'm a super huge fan and I've got a question about uh, when you both went into the studio with Vigo back in 2003 for his Pandemonium from America album with Buckethead. Um, I just wanted to know, what was the experience like? Are there any funny stories? Um, yeah, anything would be great. I still love listening to Shadow, maybe, and Half Fling, of course. Um, but yeah, anything would be great. Thanks so much. Love you both. That was a great day, wasn't it? Yeah, that was, that was, what were we doing that we ended up there? I can't remember what we were doing before, if it was an official thing, or if we had just met Vig for breakfast or lunch or something. That's but, definitely what happened. Like, but I can't remember where we'd met him, but I remember him saying... Well, we're in LA, you know that. Yeah, I know that, but it wasn't like we were at an official thing and we knew we were going. Vigo just said, I'm in the studio this afternoon. Yeah, it wasn't planned at all. He just said, I'm going to the studio after this. Yeah. And we went, yeah, we'll come. And then I think he told us, I think he pre-warned us about Buckethead because he said he will not let you take pictures showing his face. Um, and at Yo. times he might put a bucket on his head. Or a mask. He or a wear, mask. He's got a lot of masks. He had like a Halloween mask, didn't he? He had all so- he had a bag of masks. Anybody who doesn't <sighs> know Buckethead, he's an amazing guitarist, but Shreds. He, he, he likes to wear a bucket on his head. Yeah. Hence the name. Yeah, it makes sense. Keep- or he likes to wear masks as well. Yeah. He mask told- head is not as good a name. No, <laughs> but he told me a great story. He um, auditioned for... Uh, um, Ozzy Osbourne's band were you there when he told this story? I don't think so he said so basically he grew up with that music that's why he wanted to be a guitarist he knew all the riffs you know back to front play with both hands doesn't matter just amazing guitarist and those riffs is what he grew up with so he could play it all so he goes in and they're looking for a new guitarist and he's auditioning and he's playing these things and he's He's not playing it well. He's, he's, he's getting all mixed up. He can't remember it. Just the pressure of being there with Ozzy Osbourne. And, and he's like, oh, God, I can't play this stuff. And Ozzy very kindly said, look, why don't me and the band go out? We'll grab a cup of coffee. We'll come back once you've settled in a bit. And he was like, yeah, okay, okay. And they all left, and he's like, try to play it. And he thought, oh, I'll put a mask on, because he, he, he likes to play behind a mask, you know. So he put a, a skeleton mask on. And he, he, was, he was playing it and he's going, yeah, I'm getting back into it. I, I'm getting good. Door opens. Ozzy and the band all come back in. So he looks up and obviously the first thing Ozzy sees is a skeleton. And he says, my God, man, how long have we been away? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. That's great. That's great. <laughs> I love that. Um, but wait, so that day in the studio, from my recollection... You, me, Elijah, Buckethead, Vigo. Vigo was playing us a few things. This is half finished. I'm yeah. Try to work out this. And he had said to us guys, he was like, this needs a piano. This might need a little bit of guitar. Because he knew that we all kind of were able to in somewhat play, you being at a, a higher level than Elijah and I. And then I think we all just at times drifted in and out of the studio, didn't we? Elijah was sat on the piano tinkling around. He came back in. You played a few things on guitar and bass is that right 
I know that I'm I know that I'm credited wrong on that album. Oh, this is a disgrace. Because it says I'm playing bass when I was playing drums, and it says I'm playing drums when I was playing bass. I was very disappointed. Yeah. But my favourite thing is the the thing that you and Elijah did. The halfling. That's the one that she says. That's she likes great. The most. That's really fun. So we went in there. Elijah and I used to do this kind of voice. What's it all? Hello. That's it, yeah. Hi, Pitz. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I think what happened was, it's like a sarcastic thing. I have it with other friends now where, where if something bad happens, it's I, I, I say, I'll just enjoy it. Like someone said, I'll just fall down the stairs and cut my arm up. And I go, I'll just enjoy it. <laughs> and um, Elijah and I had this thing where they would come over to us and say, sorry, guys, you know, we're going to have to reattach your feet because they've come Whoa. off and all this kind of stuff. And Elijah and I would both be like, no, <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> and we were just messing about with those voices in the studio, weren't we? And it's kind of similar to this. I remember Vigo kind of nodding away, going, yeah, yeah, do that, do that, do that. And then they record as much stuff as they could. And then I think after we'd left, I think between him and Buckethead, they were like, oh, well, that piano piece that Billy did is great. And yeah, yeah, I like that yeah. drum and this guitar. And, and it kind of became a thing. And then, I don't know about you, but Vigo then drove to my house months later with four CD uh, like boxes, which must have been like 200 CDs. And he's like, here you go, this is for you. I was like, oh. Thanks, yeah, man. yeah, I think they just arrived at my house one time. But Vigo's really kind that way. I remember one time he came to my house as well, I think to watch the Academy Awards one right. year, and he arrived with a box of books. He just thought, there's a box of books, like, you know, 50 books. Yeah. You know, yeah, thanks very much. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he did something like that with me one time where he opened up the boot of his car and just said, just take anything you want. And it was Did you just take a spare wheel? <laughs> <laughs> it was just like shoes and books and records and CDs. And he was like, yeah, just take anything you want. I get the feeling that maybe he was taking it to Goodwill. And he was like, if you want it, I'm giving it away. Probably wasn't his car. Is that it for voicemails? We're done. Now, we do have some questions that people have written in. Ah. Should we talk about these questions now, Don? Do we have time for that? If you want to ask us a question, you can email us, the Friendship Onion at castmedia.com. Or you can leave a voicemail at www.speakpipe forward slash the friendship onion. I think, did I miss a dot there? A dot com. www.com. No. www.thefriendshiponion.com. No. Yeah, it is. Here we go. I'll do it again. Right. We'll cut this bit out. Maybe we won't. Or you can leave a voicemail for us at www.speakpipe thefriendshiponion.com forward slash thefriendshiponion.com I'm just going <laughs> to around. That's just the Friendship <laughs> Onion like eight times. There's, got, there's a thing about tubes like, you, or something. Well, what you, is the voice we'll leave, a, we'll, you, we'll leave all the, in the notes in the podcast notes. You can see it underneath. But you always get it right. It's, it's something about a up. tube. If you want to leave a voicemail, it's www.speakpipe forward slash thefriendshiponion.com forward slash speakpipe. Uh, I think it's speakpipe.com forward, forward slash the, the friendship, friendship onion. onion. We've done it! <laughs> hey! Oh, that anyway. was easy. Oh, I've got hot flashes from that. Oh, this is one's for Billy. Oh, what is it? Go on, Bill. Shall I read this so that you can answer it? Yeah. This question is for Billy. I would like to hear the story about your song, The Last Goodbye. Oh, it makes me cry. How did it come about? What was the inspiration? Really interesting because when I first heard it, it was so overwhelming that I literally cried. Marina, I cried too when I've heard that song. Billy's voice. I'll tell easy. you what, I'll tell you how it happened. I'll, I'll do it as quick as I can. They were using the song that I did in Return of the King, uh, The Edge of Night, they wanted to use in the trailer for The Hobbit Battle of the Five Armies. Mm. Uh, so they sent me uh, a, a note about that and I thought it was brilliant. I saw the trailer with the song on it. And I thought, what could be nicer? It links to two trilogies. Right, right. Lovely. I said, oh, please do. And then we got into a conversation. Who have you got to do the last song? We don't have anyone yet because it was Neil Finn before, right. one of my favourite songwriters in the world. And I said, well, you know, I'll do it. And uh, That's they, quite unlike you. Very unlike yeah. me. It was only because it was in the conversation. And uh, they said, well, yeah, we'll come down to New Zealand then. And I did, and then I, uh, working mainly with uh, Fran Walsh, uh, and it took a while, you know, because we kept going back and forward with different melodies and ideas, and 
And it was while I was in New Zealand, uh, and it was just me from cast. Uh, and and I would go to cafes that we would go to, mm. and I'd go for walks, and I'd think, God, this really is the, the, you know, we always said there was so many goodbyes, there was so, and it did feel like this is the last one now, sad. this is the end of it. Yeah, that's sad. Yeah, it was quite sad, and then we came up with that song, and um, and that's how it came came about. Also, it was, go on. so rather than being an end to that song, it did feel like, oh wow, this is the end of this. Tolkien journey, this New Zealand telling right. of the story, you know. And instead of sharing that that last goodbye with the rest of the cast, as we've done previously, you're now doing it on your own, walking around. Yeah. Well, and it's probably raining. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it was kind of weird. Cold. And weren't, weren't you having weren't, weren't you having problems with your gallbladder at that point? Uh, no. Was that the, no, that was later. It was another thought, time. Oh yeah. Because I was thinking, walking around, but, oh, oh, the pain. Great song. Fantastic song and a fantastic Thank question. You. Thank We've you. We've got a, a, a lovely butter-related comment. You, would you like me to read this one Go out on, for you? From, it's from Eva. From Eva. Or oh, Eva. As a Eva. child, whenever I got a tick on me, I, whenever she got a tick on her, I don't know if I've ever had a tick on me. Well, anyway, as a child, whenever Eva got a tick on her, her mum would blob a Big lump of butter on it. She said it would suffocate the tick and make it let go. I don't remember if it ever worked, says Eva. I just remember several instances where I had to sit still and stare at a big lump of butter on my arm or leg. What a lovely butter-related statement there. There's a use for butter that I've never, ever seen or heard. Would it work on my dog? Are you trying to suffocate your dog? No, if he got a tick, I mean. Roger that. Because I was going to say, that'd be a lot of butter. Well, it'd be a mean? lot of butter, I mean, to cover a terrier. I think I think it's a solid because you can't breathe through butter. And I know we've all tried it, right? <laughs> so I think the next time Bobby Johnson gets a tick, you should yeah. try it. Because the old way that you used to do it was with a cigarette. Have you seen that? <laughs> you give yeah. the dog a cigarette? Yeah, you give the dog a pack of 20. And the tickets just fall off. <laughs> no, you get a cigarette from someone who smokes and you... Tss, but I think that's... Oh, but that surely that would it get... It would you. get the dog. Yeah. Yeah. But it lets, it makes the tick let go. I think butter's nice. Of course it would make you let go. Yeah. But then after the tick fell off, your little dog would have a lovely treat of, uh, you know, licking his hindquarters a little bit of butter there. Hey, Tom, you know what's a great gift for Father's Day? Go on, I'm listening. Manscaped. <gasps> Manscaped, yeah, it's the only men's brand dedicated to below-the-waist grooming and their brand-new shaving tools just dropped right now in time for Father's Day. Yeah, I just got one! Me too. The Lawn Mower 4.0 Trimmer is now available in the USA and Canada. And you know what, Dom? It's waterproof. Wow. This 7,000 RPM trimmer features skin-safe technology to keep your balls in check and has helped reduce manscaping accidents all around the world. Another thing that prevents accidents, it's got a 4,000K LED spotlight that you can turn on and off when you need it for a more precise shave. It's also got a little button on it that allows you to lock it when you're travelling so it won't turn on in your luggage. Brilliant. Fantastic. Additional guard lengths with sizes 1 to 4 to let you trim to your liking. You can get 20% off and free shipping with the code ONION at manscaped.com. This is the perfect package for you and possibly your dad's perfect package. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code ONION. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code ONION at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code ONION. It's dad bod season. Time, Time to, to get, get smooth. smooth. Do you know a clothing company I love now, Dom? Tell me things. Viore Clothing. <gasps> hey, I thought they were just about gym stuff, you know, mm. shorts, joggies, that kind of thing, but you can wear their stuff anywhere, Dom. Yeah, they're fantastic. They obviously do board shorts, but they do a whole bunch of different clothing. You were telling me you got some jogging bottoms and some board shorts. I got so myself comfortable. a little gilet, Ooh. which is like a body warmer. I was wearing it yesterday out in the sun. I was gardening, I was chasing my animals around, the clouds came out, it's breathable, you don't get too hot in it, you don't get too cold. Not only that, it's stylish enough. I was going to wear it today, but I didn't want you to feel jealous. 
<laughs> I love it, Dom. I also love what the company's about. Did you know that they are offsetting 100% of their carbon footprint? That's fantastic. And they actually use some plastics to turn into their clothing, which is absolutely brilliant. Amazing. Viore is an investment in your happiness. For our listeners, they are offering 20% off your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viore.com slash onion. That's V-U-O-R-I dot com slash onion. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but you'll enjoy free shipping on any US orders over $75 and free returns. Go to vioreclothing.com forward slash onion and discover the versatility of Viore clothing. We should get into this now because we were talking about your dog. Sorry, the show's going to go so long. But you guys, come on. You're we're welcome, supposed to it. make this really short because we've got Elijah Wood later. I want to tell the story about how your dog tried to seduce me last week. He did, didn't he? I came down to Billy's last week to watch, is it Ufk? What is it? Ufk. What's Ufk? You know, those fighters. I can't remember what we were watching. We are watching the fighters. The two, the two fighters, they fight each other in the octagon. MMA? No, Ufk. UFC? UFC. Oh, that's what we were watching. That's right. Who came down to watch UFC. Sorry, UFC. And I know your dog well. I've known him for a few years yep. now. He's always, yep. We've always been very friendly with each other. Sometimes he'll take a little nap with me. Fantastic. But he did something which you and your wife both said he very rarely does, if I've ever. Never, I've never seen him do it Has he ever. not done it to you? No. Nope. He mounted me. He did. And then he climbed up my torso... And my chest and ended up putting his top legs kind of on my clavicle and was looking kind of up and over my head. And I felt a kind of like, you're mine yeah, he vibe. Was, he was very, very close to your face. And he doesn't like to get close to people's face. Uh, to give you some idea of the size of my dog, he's not as big as, say, one of those uh, vacuum cleaners that you would pull. He's smaller than that, right? Smaller Just to give that. you some idea. Yeah, good example. So he's like standing. Like a big chicken or a small turkey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's standing on Dom, very close to his face, and he never gets close to anyone's face. No. And I noticed him touch your face with his tongue. Yeah. And he's never done that before. Yeah. So both Billy and Billy's wife said, that's unusual, we don't know what's going on there. And then for the rest of the night, he was very close to me. And then you said the next day, mm -hmm. your wife was thought that maybe I might stay the night. Yeah we, was, yeah, we were sat up late chatting. So she put out some bedding and then Bobby was sat on the bedding the next day as if to say, where's my mate? We are supposed to have a little sleep together. We were supposed to have a sleepover. Maybe next weekend you can tell him tonight. Let's hope so. Anyway, there's a butter related question. And then a final little question here from someone. This is a lovely comment. Uh, it says, not redacted, which is strange. It says, this show is incredible. Also, your producer, John, is a fountain of knowledge when it comes to Middle Earth trivia. Now, Hornet's Nest, wide open. Because I think there was a little um, uh, emoji at the end of that. It was a, a, an ironic emoji because John has really let us down. Yeah, he's sold us down the river. I mean, the, the first couple of weeks we said, John, will you deal with the quiz questions? He said, just leave them with me, he says. Which we did. And then he inaccurately uh, had Oz tell someone that the ring is thrown into Baradour and, we, and not we, Mount oh. Doom. And at the time, I remember us kind of going, ah, yeah. oh, but John was like, no, no, it's right, I've checked it. And then it. who tried to destroy the ring at the Council of Elrond? And he got that right, he said, Boromir. And it wasn't, it was Gimli, oh, son of Cloyne. And then there was one more, I thought, which was a discrepant. Oh, the uh, pub in the, in the oh, Shire. It was just, so what we're doing this week, before we do any more quizzes, whether they are Lord of the Rings based or anything, we need to quiz John. Yes. So this week, before we bring in other guests, because we don't want to embarrass guests. No. The way that we embarrassed them before. We are bringing on John, the producer, and he is going to be quizzed. This week. And no, you know something else? I've seen on the questions and, and comments, people are saying it'd be good if we had a little more music. So you know what I've done, Dom? Yeah. I've done some quiz music. Would you allow me to play Let's it? Let's do it. I knew there was a reason why you brought your guitar with you. I brought a guitar. Do, Come would on. You mind? You've got the voice of a lark. Just to make a bit more of the quiz, because I think it should be a Let's bigger thing. Let's do it. You Wash know. your headphones. Don't, Hold don't. on. 
the voice of a lark and the finger dexterity of a, of a young Jimi Hendrix. Now, Dom. Yeah. If we like this, you need to learn it and sing it with me next week. Maybe if we like it, we can loop it. I'm going to do it there. Ready? What's... Okay, cool. Do you like that? The way it goes like that, Dom? It's quite rock and roll, isn't it? Ugh! Do you know the answers? No. To the questions that we'll ask? Do you know the answers? Ring a ding a ding ding ding. Oh! Do you know the answers? To the questions that we'll ask? Do you know the answers? Will, Will you take, take the ring? It's time for I Will Take the Ring. We have decided to call the quiz Will You Take the Ring to Mordor? So we have to ask. The and person. we should get whoever's on the quiz to say, I will I... take the ring to Mordor. Oh, let's do that then. Let's do that. So, John, are you all mic'd up? I am here, and I will take the ring to Mordor. But do, do you, you know, know the way? way? Oh! oh! <laughs> here we go, John! <coughs> Who's doing the first question? How many will we do? Should we do pretty like... Pretty nervous, pretty nervous. I was up all night studying. There's, Good. There's no prize or penalty, depending on how the questions go. Should we do like three or four questions yeah, each? Yeah, yeah, three Have each. you got an easy one to kick off? Um, yes. I'll keep score. Go Let's, on. There are four hobbits in uh, the Lord of the Rings that uh, they go on the adventure, as you know. One of them is Sam. What is Sam's full name? Samwise Gamgee. He's... Done it! He's done it! That's it, a number. It's over, right? That's, that's it. it no, one no, no, oh, no, no, no. John, don't be crazy. That's one out of one. Okay, John. Now, I actually answered this earlier on. So, if you were listening to the podcast that we've just been doing today, the answer has already gone out there. So, we'll see if you're actually listening to it. What is the name of Gimli's father? Gimli the dwarf. Gimli the dwarf had a father. Quite a few times, a few characters in the film and the book say, Gimli, son of... Gimli. It's not right. It's not the right answer. Gimli, son of of Gimli. Uh, No, No, again, you've said that again twice. That's wrong. You know, in fairness, I mean, I did have multiple choices in my questions. Oh, good point, good point. I'll give them a multiple a choice. Are, you know, on the next they're, they're, if you, you hear them, you'll know. We've got multiple choices coming up, but the answer is Gimli, son of Gloin. There you go. Oh, well, here's a multiple choice then, and I'll give you a Pippin question. <clears throat> Your favourite character. After the, <laughs> my very favourite character. After the adventure of The Lord of the Rings, Pippin and Merry return to the Shire. Pippin gets married. Does he marry Daisy Baggins? Goldilocks Gondor, Rosie Cotton, or Diamond of Longcleave? Does he marry <laughs> Daisy Baggins? The tension. Goldilocks Gondor, Rosie Cotton, or Diamond of Longcleave? All right, I, uh, I believe Samwise married Daisy. Don't get cocky, John. Well, you know, it's not the question we're so asking you. I'm going to go with Rosie Cotton. It's the wrong answer. It's Diamond of Longcleave, uh, as everyone knows. One out of three. I one out sure of three. Diamonds John. in Middle Earth. <laughs> Here is your fourth question. All right, wait, wait, love it. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, on the on the in the spirit of Merry and Pippin. Here you go. Very very easy, John. Here we go. What are Merry and Pippin's last names? Full names would be good. Yeah. Some so that's multiple choice. Well, you can't oh. get multiple choice on that one, that's I'm afraid. So uh, took. Very good. And no one ever mentions my character. <laughs> he's search- He's really so, searching for it. Can I get a clue? Can I call yes. It yes. The first part of Mary's last name is an alcoholic drink. Very often drank. Uh, at the end of an evening with a smoking jacket. And the second is a type of uh, animal. Yes. Whiskey tiger. (laughs) 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 To kill a monkey. uh, Stein mark. (laughs) What? Uh, But I like it there. You went for a Steiner there. No, it's Mary Adock or Mary 
Brandy Buck. Oh, I should have known that. So two, that's two one out, out of, of four. Oh, is it one? Yeah, yeah, well, one out of four. Or you get half a mark out of that. One and yeah, a half yeah, out one of four. One and a half out of four. Okay. Last, last couple of questions each, maybe. Or one. Yeah, let's do another two. See if we can get it up to three. Come on. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. There are wizards in Middle Earth. Correct. Also known oh. as the Istari. Ooh. There are blue, brown, grey and white wizards. Gandalf begins the adventure of the Lord of the Rings as one colour and ends as another. Grey to white. No! It's done it! Dude, that, is, that should be two points for that. We'll give two you answers. two, John. We'll give you two. That's three, three point I five. Three and a half out of five so far. I'll give you a little half I don't know how you get two points right that. there. I don't know that. I, I can't believe you gave him that. I, I like John. I, I know like you John's. don't. Well, well no, you, not the way you no, like him. No, not the way I do. John, I'll give you a choice here as to the as to the subject of the question. Do you want a Do you want a question about hobbits or do you want a question about the ring? I'll do the ring. It's a It's a simple question. It's a simple question. All right. Is it square? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, John. For all the marbles and possibly a ring. <clears throat> Who made the ring? Multiple choice. Yeah, okay, yeah. multiple yeah. choice. Was it Saruman, Sauron, Galadriel, or Elindil? Sauron. Is that correct? Did, that really get that? Did you that guess that one, John? A bit. You see the sweat right here? That was very good, John. A lot better than we thought was you would do. Four, and, really a, four and a half yeah, out of six. Of Is that right? Dom actually said that he would be surprised if you got anything. Yeah. So that is quite good, John. John, you can stay another week. Do you think we could quiz John, like, say, for instance, once a month on other things? Oh, that might be fun. And we get to know a little bit about him, what he knows, what he doesn't know, we what his interests are. We all get to learn a little are. bit of stuff. I love it. I love it. We'll, I love it. we'll come back to you on that, John. You but it. you did very good. That was supposed to be a punishment for you, but it was actually a lot of fun. Billy, security is a massive issue for people on their devices nowadays. Absolutely, we, Tom. We don't know who's looking. Almost anyone can view. You've got a webcam. You've got all of this sensitive information on your phone. How do we combat that? I'll tell you how, Dom. Express VPN. Mm. That is an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers so your ISP can't see the sites that you visit. Yeah, ExpressVPN also keeps all your information secure by encrypting 100% of your data with the most powerful encryption available. So you know that whoever you've got your internet with, they can legally sell your information to ad companies. That's crazy. But they can't do that if you do it through ExpressVPN. Yeah, ExpressVPN is available on all your devices, phones, computers, even your smart TV, so there's no excuse for you not to have it. Protect your online activity today with the VPN rated number one by CNET and Wired. Visit my exclusive link, expressvpn.com forward slash onion. And you can get an extra three months free on a one year package. That's expressvpn.com slash onion. Expressvpn.com slash onion to learn more. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. Now, it's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counselling done securely online. There is a broad range of expertise available which may not be locally available in many areas. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counsellor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. Visit betterhelp.com forward slash onion. That's better, H-E-L-P. And join over one million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counsellors in all 50 states. Special offer for the Friendship Onion listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com forward slash onion. 
But John, we're not going to let you go just yet. This seems to have been turning into the John Show because obviously each week we ask people to send in a song that they think is funky for them. Is it funky? To find out if it's funky for us. Right. Is it funky? Is it funky for you? Is it funky for me? And I think this week, John, it's you that's going to proffer up a song, right? Yeah, so this song, it has about four four kind of relevant... uh, pieces as to the show oh. which i'll kind of let you figure out please um, do do you want me to name the song now yes. or play it first no. yeah let name the song so yes. in lieu of this quiz bombing mm-hmm. even though it didn't yeah. i chose tom waits bad as me album and the song chicago mm. oh, lovely. now i know tom waits i don't know this song wow he loves Ready? chicago oh, let's do it go on <laughs> Woo! Well, that well, that was an adventure. That's I mean, it's certainly funky. How do you feel about Tom? You, uh, not York, although we'll talk about that later. But Tom Waits as an artist, I love him. Fantastic, isn't he? Yeah, I think he's very brilliant and honest. And you know, whenever I'm in the studio recording with him, no, oh. but with myself or with the band Bee Cake, whenever we think oh, we've been too weird putting this noise on we'll always go, let's listen to Tom. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, listen to how weird that is. Yeah. I think we can, you know, hit a dog with a tree. For sure. And that'll be okay. And his voice over the years has gone from, you know, uh, quite a melodious, melodious, lovely, molasses type voice to now... I think melodious means... Is that wrong? Yeah, I think that means a very stenchy fish. So what was the word I was looking for? <laughs> a voice with melody. What is, this? is there? Is there a, a melodious? With... It seems as though it should it be does, right. It? I'm, I make up my own words sometimes. I think that's good. Shakespeare did that as well. Mm. You and Shakespeare are very similar. It's true, actually. Um, brilliant. That was funky for me. I'm going to say on a scale of Brahms to Prince. I'm going to say that's the Rolling Stones. Very good. I would say, John, that was very good. You, you absolutely, you, you won our respect in the quiz, and then you've only just upped that respect with that song. It was wonderful, and I'll put that up there with the specials. Oh, that's funky. <laughs> that is funky. He's my, he's my brother's favourite artist, Tom Waits, and I think he's a good actor. Brilliant some actor. great performances, and a chameleon as well. <sighs> he's great. Hey, Tom. I think it's time that we go back and finish off our little chat with Elijah Wood. I don't see why not, because you're interesting, but you're more interesting when Elijah's around. I hear you, Dom. So why don't we do that? But, guys, if you want to get in touch with us, remember you can email us, thefriendshiponion at castmedia.com. That's cast with a K. You can send us a voice note. Yes, please. Send us a voice note to, what is it again? www.speakpipe. Dot com. Dot com forward slash The Friendship Onion. And also, Billy and I have been asking you for a long time now. If you rate and review us, and you're really proud of that review, take a screenshot, a, a screen grab or a screenshot of that review. Send it to Billy and I on our social media page. Maybe we'll put it up on our social media page. Maybe we'll read it out on the show next yeah, week. Yeah, there's some really nice reviews and like interesting reviews as well. So, and I know we haven't been very good at explaining how you do it, but once you write the review, take a screenshot of it, stick it on your Instagram and tag us in it and then we'll re-throw it back up or we'll read some out on here. I don't know how you do it on Spotify, but I'm sure it's there, but I think it's easier to leave reviews on the Apple podcast section. There was a lovely review this week that said, I think Dominic Monaghan is the most handsome man in the world. And I thought, yeah, thanks, Mum. I left that one, actually. Ah, Bills, thanks. Don't worry about it. Guys, we're going back to Elijah Wood, and we'll see you all next week. Bye. Toodles. Lies, do you want to read this question from Nick M in Nova Nova Scotia? Nova Scotia, Canada. Were any of you aware, or had you seen Peter Jackson's horror films upon or prior to being cast in uh, to being cast, dead alive, basket case. No, that would be um, he didn't he didn't make basket case. He made uh, 
Um, brain dead. Uh, well, dead alive is brain dead. So oh, brain right. dead. Bad taste. Uh, bad taste. Bad I think taste. he's thinking of bad taste. Yes. yes. Uh, Frighteners. Did you wonder how he'd approach Lord of the Rings with that type of background? Have you seen those films? What did you think? Um, I had seen the Frighteners and Heavenly Creatures. Same. And I think I I watched Brain Dead um, in New Zealand, and. Oh, what's the puppet film? Uh, Meet the, Meet the Feebles. Meet the Feebles. Brilliant. Fucking brilliant. Brilliant. Film. So yeah, but 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 prior it was the Frighteners and um, Heavenly Creatures, and based on those two things, I remember very distinctly hearing about the announcement that the movies were being made, which was probably 1997 that they actually announced that he was he was embarking on the journey, and it took that time to get it all all up and running. And I remember thinking, oh, man, that makes so much sense. Because of the mixture of fantasy and, and human drama storytelling in Heavenly Creatures specifically, mm-hmm. I thought, oh, that's so perfect. Because that is a, you know, there is a world, a fantasy world that's present in, in those characters' yeah. minds that they sort of live and exist in. Yeah. That was so beautifully realized. That Mario Lanza world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But then also... The, the, the sort of pathos and the, the human drama of it was so real and grounded. It just, yeah, I just remember thinking about him and going, oh, man, I love that film. What he'll do with Lord of the Rings makes sense. How I thought that. Ooh. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, I'd, I'd saw most of them, actually. And the one that sticks in my mind, I'm slightly older than you guys. And uh, when I was growing up and uh, video recorders came out, VHS, and you had to go and rent a movie. Yeah. And the local store would have a few. And there was only about four or five movies. And for some reason, Bad Taste was one of them. Oh, wow. It was Bad Taste, The Warriors. Wow. The Wild Bunch. And I think that that was basically the, all the movies that this store had. What a trio. So you would basically take one out, you know, every week. So uh, for some reason, and I don't know why, that was one of the VHS movies that was, you know, in circulation. Because that's <clears throat> wild. Excuse yeah. me. The, don't know the, why. the video cover of Bad Taste had a very iconic cover. It was the alien. Yeah, that's giving right. Giving the middle finger. That's right. It kind of scared me when I was a kid. I was just like, yeah. whoa, that the looks... The box art, yeah. Yeah, that looks a little crazy. I watched Heavenly Creatures once I got to New Zealand. I'd seen The Frighteners, didn't know it was Pete Jackson. Mm. Watched Meet the Feebles when I was in New Zealand. Oh, yeah. And I was a little bit in the same headspace as you. I was like, right, okay, so... If, a Frankenstein of all of those three, I can make sense of, and especially heavenly creatures. Yeah, yeah. I was like, wow, there's some real gravitas to it, all mm. a grandness, you know. Have you guys seen the new Kate Winslet detective thing on HBO? Mayor of East Mayor of Easttown. I haven't seen it yet. It's great. That's what I've heard. Oh. Yeah, she's great. She's incredible. She just has that magic thing with great actors where you never see the acting. Mm. She's just. She's just being, mm. yep. you know, she really is. Brilliant. And Melanie Linsky, too. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, both of them, I think it was their first feature film. Melanie, I think, had never acted in anything. Wow, was that Because right? she was local. Melanie's from New Zealand. You worked with her on another project, right? Yeah. I've worked with her twice. I worked with her on a, an animated show called Beyond um, uh, Over the Garden Wall. Right. And then we made a movie together together. Uh, called um, I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore. Which right. is brilliant. Yeah. I love that film. Oh, cool. Do you know where I saw that? I where? saw that in Pete Jackson's house. Did you? Yeah. That's crazy. They, they'd watched it the night before, him and Fran. Oh. And we were looking for a movie to watch and he said, oh, let's watch Elijah's movie. It's great. Oh. And I loved it. Your oh, performance that... of that is brilliant. Oh, yes, yeah, great. Thank you. So wonderful. Oh, both it's, of you. It's constantly brilliant. put up in the Netflix kind of critics picks. Uh-huh. Like when they do that little section, that movie's in there. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, that's, that's really great. cool. Guys. Yes. Should we listen to voicemails from people around the planet? Telling Wait, you us get what? voicemails yeah. from people around the planet? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's like technology we use. If you want to leave a voicemail, you can do that at www.speakpipe forward slash the friendship onion. That's really cool. It's cool, right? So let's let's uh, hear what people are saying to us this week. Hopefully not abuse. So say, for instance, you you miss being on the podcast next week, uh, Elijah, or yeah. the week after. I could leave you a voicemail. Yeah, if you please. Could, yeah. Oh, I yeah. will. Yeah, good. Great. All right, let's see. 
Hey there. I'm really excited to hear this podcast. I think you guys both have great chemistry. Oh. In one of the appendices, Dom, you mentioned seeing Elijah Wood tumbling down three flights of stairs. <laughs> I think, Billy, you mentioned that the irony is that his eyes don't really work very well. I was wondering if you could elaborate more on that story and also um, a little bit more on how bad Elijah's eyesight is. <laughs> and if there are any other stories regarding that, I just thought yep. it was really funny. But yeah. Thanks so much for listening to this, and I'm excited to listen to the podcast. Take care. Bye. Oh, that's such a lovely message. Well, Fun this thing. is so, that was so strange because we it? were just talking about this off Me camera. Me falling, yeah. Mm. I seem to recall we were in Camperdown Studios, or it might, it might have been Stone Street. I think it was Stone Street. Mm. I can't remember what we were doing, but you were in front of me. And you were looking over your shoulder, talking to me, and you kind of just missed a step and tumbled a little bit, but trying to regain your footing down those stairs. Mm. And we were laughing. And I was like, oh, are you okay, Elijah? And you were like, yeah, I'm okay. And you kind of like bounced up. And then as we turned the corner to the next set of stairs, you either did it on purpose or it happened again. <laughs> and you jumped up like a cat. <laughs> It was crazy. It, it sounds like I did it on purpose. The, the second first, time. The first bit, maybe not. Yeah. That sounds genuinely like I was losing my footing. But the, yeah. se the second one, yeah. Because I, I, I loved and still do love Pratt Falls. Mm. Um, I actually took, you know, the staircase. So the, the first hotel that we stayed at where they, they put us up before the, we ended up getting accommodations. The, was it the Duxton? Ten points. Duxton. The Duxton. The, the Duxton. Duxton. Nice. Well done. Yeah. They've since changed the name of it, I think. It's now a different hotel. But it was the Duxton then. Yeah. Nice one. Yeah. Uh, well and I remember intentionally, because it had that, when you walked in the lobby, it was a high, high, high ceiling. Yes. Because mm -hmm. there was a mezzanine that you could walk up to. There was a big staircase off to the right that would wound around to the mezzanine area. And I remember taking those stairs and intentionally prat falling down those stairs. Wow. Brilliant. About halfway down, yeah. But you were very difficult to hurt. I remember once, <laughs> I don't mean emotionally. <laughs> but, um, you, I I'm remember, very easy to hurt emotionally. <laughs> but physically, nah. Nah, nah. I remember we were somewhere uh, at this sort of seaside because the sea was there and there was a beach and you jumped over the wall, which was like this height, you know, uh, onto the beach but not knowing that the other side was like a 15 foot fall and you just landed and laughed. And I remember thinking, when I looked over the wall, I was like, oh my God, he could have killed himself. <laughs> and you didn't know it wasn't, you just jumped over and, yeah. and you were all right. Yeah, yeah, it was, it, you, you're quite incredible how you can't hurt yourself. I think it's that thing though, when your body knows what's going to happen, it right. braces for the fall, ah. which is actually very dangerous. Ooh. It's what they often say that, that drunk drivers walk away from a lot of ah. accidents because their bodies don't brace and you get injured by bracing because you're, ah. you're holding, you know, you're waiting for something to happen and you go stiff and that is what actually causes injury. So having not known what was on the other side was probably to my benefit. Mm. Cause yeah. I suppose because it was sand that helped. There's that. Yeah. as well. Yeah. Cause you did recently take a tumble and hurt yourself, didn't you? Yeah. About two years ago, um, uh, we, my girlfriend and I lived in a, in a place near downtown that was a, a sort of an industrial building. It was a loft space. And I, uh, she was away. We were actually running a, a film festival out of our house just for our friends called the Fortnite Friend Film Festival. Um, just movies that we had never seen and we just in, like programmed it, invited friends over and it was kind of an open door policy. Lovely. So anyway, I, I just watched um, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and I was on a break between films. Um, Can I just interject? Yeah. At the end of Butch Cassidy and the, and the Sundance Kid, they both take a massive leap. <gasps> And they ultimately die. They do. Yeah. That's really... That's interesting. I had not put those two things together. Right. Yeah. So, so go on. Sorry. Finished watching the film. Um, and I was sitting outside on a break at about two hours before the next film was supposed to start. And I thought, oh, you know, I haven't changed the air filters in the AC units in quite some time. <laughs> Random. <laughs> I'll just use this time. So I climbed up to the roof and th the property had... Uh, or has a, a sort of corrugated plastic roof material over some plants that lets sunlight through. And I just hadn't been up there in a long time. And instead of walking along the roof line that was solid roofing, 
I walked in a diagonal and crossed over that corrugated plastic, which of course didn't hold my weight, instantly fell through. So I, I stepped over, fell through to concrete below about 15 feet. When you say concrete, you mean another floor? No, it was the, it was the ground. Oh. It was a concrete, wow. concrete floor, yeah. Wow. And uh, I, yeah, I had a small hip fracture, dislocated my left hand from my wrist, broke a small bone in my left hand, which is actually miraculous considering the fall, the, the length that I fell. I mean, if I'd fallen wrong, if I'd hit my head, yeah. I, you know. Oh, Did you make enough work. noise that people at the film festival knew that something had happened to you? Nobody was there. So were you like, help? I, I was alone, so... It was a it was a wild series of events. Fell knew I would like you know as soon as I felt the plastic from underneath me buckle, I thought okay that's it. You know your brain immediately goes I'm falling, so that happened. And then I fell, landed, and immediately took stock. Kind of uh, how am I doing? Okay, oh, yeah. okay yeah. Right. all right. Up, Ow. my left hand is dislocated and like it was like out here. So I was like oh I can't move that. That's not good. Gonna need help for that. I need to call 911. I need to go to the hospital. This is obviously not something I'm going to walk away from. So I had my phone in my pocket that I'd fallen on but managed to not destroy my phone. Called 911. I then had a cigarette. Nice. In a kind of... I was in shock, yeah. clearly mm-hmm. in shock. I didn't feel any pain yet. Right. Um, so I had a cigarette kind of like calm my nerves down because my, my adrenaline was really going. Sure. I then called my girlfriend and tried to sa- sound as extremely as calm as I possibly could so as not to scare her. Yeah. And of course, I didn't sound as calm as I thought I did. Yeah. Uh, and I stayed on the line with her until I got outside and saw the ambulance so I could f- tell her where, where we were heading, what hospital. Um, so were you kind of hopping because you fractured I your was, hip? I was kind of limping. Yeah. Right. The, the hip fracture, I could even hear like a little clicking in my uh, hip because <laughs> I'd actually dislocated part of my thigh muscle from my hip that had to be reattached in surgery oh. um, but the real pain it, it is our bodies are so resilient I don't know if you've had any extensive injuries like that but like when you break a bone and you have that kind of injury your body goes into self-preservation mode and you don't you legitimately don't feel anything yeah Massive amount of endorphins. For a while. And, right. and then it started to kick in when I got to the hospital. They gave me some, uh, they gave me fentanyl at the, once I got into the ambulance, mm. which scared me because, um, you know, there's obviously a fair amount of deaths associated with yeah. the abuse of fentanyl. And um, they're like, no, no, it's, we, we have a medical grade we fentanyl. Know, we know yeah. the dosage. I'm like, okay, great. Um, but once I got to the hospital, it started to come on the pain. Uh, by the time that my girlfriend had gotten there, actually, it just started rising and that was intense. Then they had to, they had to reset my left wrist to my my left hand to my wrist, and in order to do that, they said we're going to give you ketamine, and we're going to give you a fair amount of ket- ketamine that is that will disassociate you from the moment. Mm. You won't be aware of what's happening, but you will be awake. Mm. I thought okay, and they gave me the the ketamine, and that sent me into this like it was such a trip, man. Mm. I don't know if you've ever had ketamine. A K hole. It is like a slightly different dimension of what you're in now currently. Yeah. It f- and it felt a little scary, slightly. I remember feeling it was like a little dystopian, mm. a little creepy. Mm. Um, I remember I, I literally said, it's like I'm in a Jodorowsky film. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it was scary. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. Wow. And did you change the filters? <laughs> Didn't make it to the filters, no. I think I actually fell with one of the filters in my hand. Probably uh, saved you. Yeah. yeah. Put it under your hip. There you go. <laughs> and yeah. then what was the other thing? It was about Elijah's eyesight. Your eyes, you wear contact lenses. I do wear contact but you, lenses. You, your eyes are quite bad, aren't they? Yeah, and they're probably <clears throat> worse now than they were then. Mm. But yeah, oh, I'm, I mean, I, I can't see anything. I'm nearsighted, so... I remember being astounded in New Zealand when you told me that you didn't change your contact lenses. You so just Back then, I in. didn't, yeah. Back then, I wore lenses. I would wear them a month at a time. <laughs> And that was, at a t- that was at a time where you weren't supposed to, right? Yeah. Was it just the mornings were hard? Were I, just like- my eyes became so resilient. <laughs> I remember the very first time I slept in them, I was probably 10 or 11 years of age, and it was impossibly painful. I accidentally <laughs> slept in them, woke up, and my eyes were sort of welded shut, and it was extremely, extremely painful. But then after that, my eyes just were so resilient. 
That's and brilliant. I would wear them out a month at a time and then change them out. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. Now I take them out every night and I wear I wear um, dailies. So I don't have to clean them and I don't have to deal yeah. with solution. I just put them, pop them in, throw them away at night. But the irony is now you there are types of contact lenses that you can wear for a, a month at a time. But sure. back then there weren't. You could well, wear... Well, you've got to clean them and all that, don't you? Is that, uh, you, did, you just kept them in? I never... Just slept never, in them and then you'd have like them. 10 minutes of... Yeah, just like a little <laughs> crustiness in the morning and away we go. Crazy. Yeah. The only thing about the ones that you throw away, apparently in the ocean now, a lot of fish are wearing them. Uh, they don't need them. Right, because I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. if it was a fish... That's long sighted. <laughs> that's great. Fantastic opportunity. Three yeah. or four for a new times. Life. Three or four times out I of a hundred. I can see. Oh, you guys. Is, is that a shark? And you can get out the way. I can see the plankton. <laughs> I can read the newspaper without needing to. <laughs> <laughs> Hard with fins. Billy and Dom eat the world. Guys, we're going to run out of time here. Come on. We're going to have to Let's invite you back, Lige. i got to come back. Yeah, you got to come back. We'll sort of. Should we, we do eat, it? Eat so- should we eat the world? We have a thing, right? As you probably know. Bill and Dom eat the world, where we eat things from different places in the world yeah. Yeah. that they might be known for a certain type of food. Let's eat the world. Let's do that. I'd, I'd actually done a little song for this. Oh, go on. But, uh, John, Hold are you on. coming in with Eat the World? Oh, our, our illustrious producer, John, is coming in with uh, napkins and forks and stuff. So we can do th- the. the if someone wants to slap some drum and bass on this, maybe sample it. I can't really, I beat. can't bass thing. Not I'll you. Go. I no. mean the, the people back home when oh, they listen right. to this. Okay. It's, half, it's a half-finished song. Mm. Right, Sometimes it. it's a waffle. One time it's a plum. Eating the world, eating the world, eating the world with Billy and Dom and Elijah. Oh. Hey! We'll put a larger in parentheses there. That's oh, great. That was very good. That you know, very good. put some BPMs on there, maybe a cymbal. <laughs> <laughs> Beats and cats, boots and cats. Right, Elijah, do you want to be the, the sure. do the honours? Sure. As they say. What have we got here, El- ladies El- and El- gentlemen? Elijah's girlfriend, Ooh. who he has a child with, is from Denmark. Right. Wonderful country. And I have been informed that in Denmark, one of their traditional dishes mm-hmm. is wow. Pickled herring. We can and we can type of translate bread. for you. A pickled herring, you see. Oh, a it's, pickled oh, herring. Ah, we got plates here Look and bowls. Plates. There you oh, go. I was so bowls, excited bowls. there. And a napkin. I don't think it's something that should be served in a bowl. No, it shouldn't. It Billy, should be more of a, a saucer. Thank you, sir. Um, oh, it's got a. It's strong. Oh, I tell you what. There's a scent to a pickled herring. There is it. There's uh, a. Is there strong... a bowl, Billy? Give us a bowl. There's three. Hey? Of, you've got three of them. Oh God, you threw them over. No, you didn't. Ready? Yeah. It's coming like a frisbee. Yeah. Thank you. Nice. And there's one for Lige here. I'll take the top. Oh, one. I love that. Thank you, Lige. You're welcome. Thank you. We're going to what? Apologies. <gasps> here he comes. Apology here comes accepted. Elijah it's for the fishiness Wood. that I will leave behind. Mm. Um, this is the kind of so, thing you wouldn't bring on a flight, is it? No, no. So, uh, pickled herring is not necessarily specific to Denmark. Very Scandinavian, though. Scandinavian. Um, but this is sort of an approximation of smarbo. Smarbo. Oh, which is uh, essentially... Oh. I think, actually, the smart means buttered, I believe. Bread. And bro, bro, it's very difficult to pronounce Danish, is bread. So it's anything oh, atop bro. bread. Oh, right. So, and, so it's a, basically... So this is... I brought um, a Danish rye. That I've that I've pre-sliced for this. Well, thank you. Um, and you know, in Denmark, there are restaurants that are devoted to just this thing. Ooh, it's my very, God. very traditional. It's almost like a Danish taco. The idea is, you have the the traditional rye bread, and anything can go on top, from fried fish to vegetables, whatever combination that you can think of. L- Obviously, shrimp. herring is a very traditional. Little shrimps, little prawns. Sure. I've seen that. Yeah, sure. They eat a lot of that around there, don't they? Hold mm-hmm. on, guys. There's a what? now. I would I mean, say you could describe the smell more as a stench than a smell. <laughs> would that be accurate? There's a, s- there's a stench. Well, as I say, you wouldn't. It's pickled fish, isn't it? It is pickled fish. Oh, Hang it's on. certainly pickled fish. Elijah's firing. Hold right on. In. Hang on. All right. Get as close to the microphone when you're eating it. We need the, the mastication, is very important. Oh, yeah. So, I mean. Mm. Oh, and you would, mm. you, would, mm. you would traditionally have mm. this with schnapps or aquavit. I call it, yep. yeah. Mm. yeah it's, it's vinegary, it's fishy. Well, it's certainly fishy. I'm loving it. Hold on. I'm going to have another go because it's quite a shock. 
on your first bait. Elijah, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're going to give you the categories in which we rate these things so that you can have a think. Okay. The first one, are you all right, Bills? I'm all right, I got stuck, man. And you're two. <laughs> no, my throat. The fir- <laughs> Billy's been suffering from throat issues today. I'm I, quite worried about him. I'm just worried that I was, uh, was going to get some hair in, in the lung. Mm. Quite hard to get out of there once it's in. So we rate we rate our eating the world based on taste yep. out of ten. Billy, I always forget the other two. Um, um, T- taste out of ten. Taste out of ten. Also, um, aesthetics. Ah, the look, the feel, the vibe, whatever. Okay. okay. The whole ambiance of it all. And also, um, the usefulness. Yeah, flexibility. <laughs> Um, like a flexibility almost. Usefulness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of this food. Can, I, like, can I use this? Is this going to come in handy? <laughs> These were Billy's. <laughs> These were Billy's categories. Billy Kelman. Like, would, would you, like, if you're in the house and you'd pickle herring, right? And mm. all you've got is an, a bagel, some crackers, and a piece of cheese. Would you think to yourself, that's useful right now? Yeah. Or, mm. you know, how useful is it in the house? When you don't have a lot of other stuff, you know. At yeah. one point, we're yeah. Gonna, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. At, what, at one point, at one point, we're, we're probably going to do marmite because you know marmite, such as of course, yeah. Now, marmite's fantastic. It's not necessarily useful on its Here's own. Here's a question. Yeah, go on. Mm. Uh, when it comes to marmite and Vegemite, where do you stand? I'm a marmite guy. Right, Vegemite's Australian. Is it? Is it? it that's is. that's the distinction. Yeah, but they're also and New Zealand, isn't it? Yeah, New Zealand do their own version of marmite and their own version of Vegemite. But oh. we're the original. We England created the original. Right. I, I Wasn't it an accident? Yeah, I think it was um, born out of the beer making industry. Right. The dregs of yeast. Right. And they recognized that there was a flavor to that that was really good, and they packaged it. With your girlfriend Incredible. being Danish, do you eat a lot of Scandinavian Danish type food? There's not a lot in Los Angeles. True, is the problem. Do, um, do you know Soccer Bit? Oh my God, are you on Third me? Street, oh, yeah. the sweet shop? Oh yeah, oh, dude, come wow, on. come on, incredible. Oh yeah, by the pound, <laughs> by the pound. So it's good. actually very good for you, pickled herrings. You know, is it? Yeah, because of these omega threes and also your vitamin D three. That's right. Yeah. So, um, lots of omegas, omega three, maybe omega six. So probably very good. Yeah. Very mm. good for you. Fish is very good for you. Very good for you. I don't what else do you know about pickled herring? Well, I'm just Dom looking now. I'm Elijah. cheating. Do you know anything? I'm cheating here. Oh. Hang on. I'm going to read a little piece here. Pickled herring, especially brined herring, is mm. common in Russia and Ukraine, where Elijah and I have both worked, mm. where it is served, cut into pieces, seasoned with sunflower oil and onions like this, yeah. or can be part of herring salads. Such as dressed herring. Yum. Mm-hmm. There's also a lot of dill. Dill is pretty prevalent in a lot of Scandinavian food as well. I was Sweden. Cool. I too. really liked that. Do you guys right? and see these sort of Russian sort of uh, states? I, I was doing. I was uh, working over in Lithuania. Wow. And I was I was in the hotel and I went down for breakfast. And the first day I was there, I had the normal breakfast, oh, yeah, eggs, whatever, blah blah. And then it was the second day. Over in the corner, there was something. And I thought, what is that there? And I took a walk over to this ice mountain. Caviar. <gasps> like, honestly, 10 different types of caviar. For breakfast. Breakfast. Who do you think you are? Cream, with the little <laughs> little pancakes, cheese, cream, yeah. all the stuff. Yeah. Oh, I, Elijah. I, I couldn't love. sleep at night <laughs> for thinking about getting up for this caviar. Salty, caviar. though, eh? Salty. Love it. So good for you as well. Is and it? And then the, mm. the waiter Back would come nutrients. over, mm. would you like eggs? or? Th- no, I don't want eggs. Caviar. What are you talking about? Have you seen the mountain over there of <laughs> caviar? I'll be eating that until I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> and it was fantastic. <laughs> I love and, it. And it that, was free. And it was, well, it was your breakfast. It Fuck. was just your breakfast. Because caviar is very expensive. It Whoa, can be. Not in Lithuania. Wow. They'll serve you that like it's a boiled egg. Wow. <laughs> I love the caviar scene in, in Big, you know, where he tries oh, it for the great. first time. <laughs> oh, it's great. Back to the pickled herrings. We've got to give it marks out of 30. So there's, separated there's into a three 10 sections. and 10 and 10. I got it. Do you want me to go first to give you an idea yeah. of how we go about this? Yeah, go. You can, <clears> give, you can do decimal points. Oh, okay, I good. didn't know that until last week. So he put right. an eight point four in. Yeah. I, I didn't. You're know like, oh, we're doing allowed. decimal points. Yeah. Are you know we? what I mean? Oh, okay. yeah, I don't sorry. know why we didn't it's make an it out of hundred. Yeah. Anyway, good point. Taste. I'm giving it an eight point two. Nice, because it's high in taste. It's delicious, but it's a shock 
the first time you bite into it. Yeah. yeah. So that took off a point straight away. Yeah. You've got to be ready for it. Maybe the stench yeah. is what helps you get ready for that I like flavor. the shock. I find it quite refreshing, the yeah. shock. I was like, oh, bow. I was like, oh, I didn't expect it to be that strong. Right. Check the sell by date. Yeah. I thought, yeah. but I carried on. Yeah. <laughs> for looks, I'm not going to give it a high on looks, other than I like how dense it is. Yeah. The denseness is good. So I'm only going to give that a 6.2. <laughs> And for usefulness, it's not that useful. It's not. I'm not going to put it on a pizza. No. Um, no. You know what it's I mean? It's not very versatile. It's not no. versatile. No. You either... You're not going to stir it into soup. No. No, 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 no. 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 You eat it with that hard brown bread, yeah. which is the only other flavour that will go with it. Yeah. So I'm going to have to give it a 3.6 well, in okay. versatility. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Lige? All right. Uh, I'd say a nine for flavor. It's oh, superb like for flavor. I love it. I love it. I love all things pickled, though. I love mm. I love oh. briny, pickly things. Same. Mm-hmm. Sweet and otherwise. Mm. Um, what's the next one? Appearance. 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 Mm. I mean, it's not the most aesthetically beautiful food. No, it's the bastard child of pickled fish. I'd say... A seven? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a seven? Oh, Give it it's, a it's, it's, I mean, you, think of some beautiful, think of some Japanese food that you may have had. Sure. Some sushi. That, I mean, they've taken the same fish at some point. I will say. <laughs> and they've made it look pretty. It's true. I will say a, a, a proper smabro, if, if you were to get it in a restaurant, might be more beautiful than what we just I like the way you say that. Smabro. Yeah. Smabro. Yeah. Um, I'm getting better at it. And seven. then usefulness? I gotta go low on usefulness. <laughs> Yeah. Usefulness is a difficult one, but we're low. keeping it. Yeah, we'll I, keep it. It's... I think um <laughs> Here's the thing that's that that makes it more useful. Okay. Is that you can uh you don't have to cook it. The preparation is that you right out of the jar, uh-huh, you can eat it. So So you can have it I on a car like journey. I feel like it's more useful than yeah, maybe you, a you can have it in your glove. This is bear four, with me. A four point seven. Right, four point seven. As up there, almost halfway useful. Yeah. But from right. what Large is saying there, potentially, and bear with me for a second. It's one o'clock. Bear with me for a second. You could put a jar of pickled herring in your glove box, mm-hmm. and then while you're driving, you could ask the passenger to pass it over to you, and hopefully open it for you, so you don't have to do it yourself. And then as you're driving down the motorway, you could just. Drink, drink it and then uh, open it. I uh, 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 got a big bit in there. Do you remember, speaking of, this reminds me of pickled onions. Do you remember who used to eat a lot of pickled onions? Is it our friend Mark? No. On the set of Lord of the Rings. Oh, Peter Jackson Pickle, loves a pickled onion. Pickled onions, onions and, and cheese and, and, and crackers. cubes of cheese. And then he'd come over really close to you and he'd go, I want you to be really scared in this moment. <laughs> and you go, I am. I'm scared of your breath, Pete. Get away. It's awful. It's awful. So in New I Zealand, love they don't. Onions. I love them too. I love them love too. Them. Can, I tell you, can I tell you what my favourite pickle is of yeah. all time? Because they do them here. The pickled hot chili peppers. You know the the oh, yellow yeah. banana peppers. Yeah, great. Oh, that in the morning. Great. Come on. Ooh. Come on. So good. Not as good as a pickled onion though. Love a pickled really? fish, chips, two pickled onions. Mm. <sighs> so good. Lovely. Yeah. Soaking gonna... into the chips. I love sauerkraut as well. Oh, I love oh, sauerkraut and the sauerkraut juice. I will drink. Yeah. That. It's supposedly very good for a hangover. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give my scores. Taste. Yes. I'm just getting a bit off the back of my tooth there. Yeah. 9.2. Ooh, Ooh, it's up there. I loved it. It's I, up lo- there. I absolutely loved it. Looks. I'm with you guys. I'm going to say a, a 1.7. Yeah, it's not, oh, that's a, not that's, pretty. That's an ugly food. I think the taste... <laughs> The taste could stop you from trying it if you weren't brave like we were. The so, look. The, the look. The look, I'm sorry. The look. And then usefulness. Yeah. Uh, I'll be charitable. 3.5. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's not that useful. I loved it, though. I absolutely so loved good. it. You would There's a place in lot. Copenhagen that next time you're there, uh, you should go. It's an institution. I think it's like 100 years old. It's a place called Shunemans. And it's not easy to get. Every time we've, we've been, we couldn't manage to get a table. And we finally got a table this last trip, which just was just before lockdown. So the last time I was in Denmark. I was there we with were, you. Almost. Yes. yes we, almost, mm. we almost saw your show. And we had oh, to go. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So 
Yeah. Shunemans. Anyway, we managed That's to go to Shunemans. And Shunemans. It's I just in, thought you were sneezing. It then. is incredible. It's uh, That is their specialty, and it's every variety of, of Smobro that you can think of. It's awesome. Oh, so good. awesome. I could go that right now. Oh, so good. Do you guys not think, because we're going to finish. And like schnapps, oh my God. Oh, schnapps, amazing. Like, di- like dill aquavit and all these different flavors of oh. aquavit. So good. Yeah, I lived in Sweden for like oh. nine months. Oh, I love I, Sweden. And our well. friend Jason came over, and we did an, an absolutely no expenses spared smorgasbord which took like four yes. or five hours and it was incredible awesome i know you have to go large and we'll have you come back whenever you want because we've got so much to talk about and we didn't touch upon anything but very quickly do you guys not think it's really interesting that how long have you been married bills uh don't get in trouble with your wife for god's sake 13 years what year is it here what 2021 21 10 11 12 you've been allowed you've been married for 12 years yep. you've got a 15 year old son Elijah, you've been with your girlfriend for how long? Five years. Five years. You've got a 20-month-old son. But the gay rumours are still kind of circulating <laughs> around with the three of us. Do you it's, not find is that, that? Is that true? Here, well, I do this Q&A on Instagram. Yeah. And, you know, there's questions all oh, over the yeah, place. Oh, yeah, I see that on, but, your, on your stories or but whatever. Yeah. Guaranteed, at least I would say, 10 oh, questions I, I will be... I just saw one. Are you gay? Are you and Elijah gay? Are you and Billy married? Uh, you, your answer is, is actually Billy's... was really sweet. Your answer was, well, considering the fact that, you know, both Bill and, and Elijah are fathers and, you know, uh, I, like, you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> do, like, do, work, do, work with the science here. Someone asked me, someone asked me, is Billy's son also your son? And I was like, well, how does that even biologically work? Well, it's questions, isn't it? Uh, do you know what I mean? Questions. Yeah. I think questions. it's probably because we're all... Together. Yeah. Yeah, we're just closer. I know you have to leave, Lige. What about the, um, is there a music thing? Oh, we've got, do you want, have you got time for the music thing? Let's just do Should it. we do the music thing? It's do you just, guys have this time? This is a new thing. This is a new regular feature of the show, inspired by Elijah Jordan Wood, because you're such a big fan of music, called Funky For You, where we, ha- we ask our guest, or s- someone that phones into the show, to pick 10 seconds of a song, and we ask, is that funky for you? For you. So, Elijah, what have you picked for us? I have picked the opening 10 seconds Ooh. of a song called Hallelujah by Can, the German cat rock band Can. Let's do it. Pump it up, Chris. Let's I, hear it. I know you're not called Chris, John. All right, that's past 10 seconds. How are we? We've not even talked about how we're going to rate these scores. We don't. It's because we don't even know. This is uncharted territory. I Play think- that again. I liked it so much. Play it again. John! <laughs> oh, I was- Here we go. I like that bit. Drumming's extraordinary. It's an 18-minute song. Get the heck out of town. 18 minutes. Uh, there's a single minutes. edit on, on 45. Uh, that's three, f- just under four minutes. And that's, that's I've DJed with that. It's so great because it just condenses the best bits into a, like a little less than four minutes. But okay. yeah, it's an, eight, it's wow. an 18 minute song. It's so good. I think I had suggested to you that maybe we rate it, the funk-basedness of it, mm-hmm. on Brahms at the lower level of funk, because we all know that Brahms was an extraordinary musician, but I don't think anyone would describe him as as a funky music maker. Nah. And at the very top, did we say Prince? Well, Prince is funky. Prince is the funk, and we can go anything in between. Mm. For me, I enjoyed that very much. I love it As the start of a song, which is very important. So I'm glad that you took the start of a song, Elijah. And that really drew me in. As you say, the drumming, tight, tight, snare. Oh, tight. Tight! <laughs> <laughs> and then when that came in, when, I liked it. I, I liked, liked it. it a lot. I'm going to say that was very funky. Yeah, but do we want to mention a musician based on the rate of the funk? I mean, it's up there. That's with, your, that's with James Brown, that is. That's mm. James Brown funk. That's James Brown funky. Wow, that is, that's really getting up there funky. I was going to say... Early Jimi Hendrix funk. Okay. Oh, nice. Funky? Yeah. There's a little bit of room to go. Yeah. Lige? 
I would put this in the um, I would put this in the early the early Parliament Funkadelic funk. Ooh. That's a deep cut. I know. That's a deep cut. He's went like, Funkadelic. There's, a, there's an, there's an uh, yeah, Funkadelic. Wow. I would say. Hello. Yeah, early Funkadelic. Uh, it's, it's made me want to listen to the rest of it. Same. Oh, yeah. So that's good, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, Guy, real, it's a real hook. Those drums are insane. Amazing. Anyone out there, if you want to suggest 10 seconds of music to us, get in touch on our voicemail, or you can email us, thefriendshiponion at castmedia.com. That's cast with a K. And it's fun. This notion of 10 seconds is so rad, too, because there are bits in songs that that otherwise aren't funky, but it breaks down into something funky. Yes. For instance, at the end of Optimistic, before it goes into Tree Fingers, is that what it is? Yeah. Um, there's there's a little breakdown like a boom, doom, 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 doom. it goes funky for like ten seconds right. and then it goes into another thing. And just to clarify for anyone out there that wants to play that along, that was Radiohead this, by the way. Radiohead. Just to clarify for anyone out there that wants to play along, this it doesn't necessarily just need to be funk. Of course, James Brown is funky and Prince is funky and Parliament are funky, but Radiohead can be funky. Exactly. Uh, the Beatles can be funky. Uh, Macy Gray can be funky. There's a whole bunch of things that make you jump up and dance. Oh, man. I mean, the opening of, um, speaking of the Beatles. um, Sergeant Pepper's. Sergeant Pepper reprise. Reprise. Oh. Oh. We used to DJ. A monster. We used to DJ. A monster. Yeah, that is a smash. Ooh. Well, I remember talking to you guys. People are like, Ringo is, fuck off. He's an amazing. Ringo's incredible. (laughs) Amazing. Remember we had talked about in New Zealand. Helter Skelter too. Fuck. The break. I think it's the middle eight type vibe break in Pump Up the Volume by Mars. There's a funky break in that, which is just incredible. Oh, I can't I can't recall it, but I'm, yeah. Watchman! Watchman! Ah, do it! Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, Lars, you have to go. I gotta go. I'm gonna ask one more question, and it's kind of a one-word answer, and this will mm. be the thing that will slay the two of you. You ready? Mm-hmm. You have to pick. You're on a desert island. And you have to pick the entire back catalogue of either one of these three bands or musicians. Prince, David Bowie, or Radiohead. Who are you going to pick? And this will end the show. I know. That's really hard. (laughs) I know. Prince. Prince. Really? Yeah. Uh, And and it's, yeah. I uh, mean, it goes without saying, Radiohead or... It's, it's a tough call. I would go David Bowie. And I don't think we need to explain ourselves. Let's no. just leave it like that. Prince. Lige, will you come back? I would love to. We would did. Yeah, I feel like we've only we, we, we barely scratched the surface. We scrolled through so probably less tell. than a third of the show. And I wanted to <laughs> is ask that your, you. Is that your series of notes? I wanted to ask you about being famous. <laughs> us being. What does that mean? Well, I just, just the fact that the three of us have been famous for more than half of our life. So the idea of being famous to us is so kind of just, it, well, it's just who we are type thing. I wanted to swim through those murky depths, but we didn't get there. We will. We will oh, we'll get there. We did the Bowie Prince thing. Mm-hmm. I wanted to talk about... Are those jelly beans on your, Where? On your socks? They are! Look at that. Thank you. Jelly bean socks. Oh, I have one more thing. This yeah. is, I have to tell you this. Otherwise, right. otherwise my, my uh, parents will kill me. At one point, you... Had post this is years ago. You had posted on Facebook. So sad to be leaving Austin. I look forward to being back there soon. And my dad, whose name is Austin, had written to you on that same feed and said, "Oh, Elijah, I didn't know that you cared." And he didn't write back, which is fine because you didn't see it. It is, I think, my dad's favorite joke, joke. of all time. That's a great joke. <laughs> and he said, "Can you please ask Elijah if it resonated?" And I said to my dad this morning, "I don't even think Elijah saw it." So no, because if I had, I think you I would have written absolutely back. written back. So sad to be leaving Austin. Talking Talk. about my favorite jokes ever. Another question I was going to ask you, but we'll get around to it next time. Is will you wear wigs? Oh, <laughs> we I have done, and, we, and and will again. We'll we'll break that down at another point. Oh, yeah. Live, it's been great to see you. This has been so good, you guys. Wonderful, so fun. We'll Thank see you, you next week, me. guys. Goodbye Bye. from the friendship on you. Ah.